The other area that we must deal with in terms of the prescriptions for the present is the risk that one is facing with respect to the maintenance or at least the redesigning of the social security net. And in this respect, we have already seen the trauma, tremors in most countries of the world on the viability of the pension system, which is but one important aspect of the social safety net that must be addressed. And many countries are now engaged in various challenges as to the fundability of the pension systems and therefore put a very vulnerable group in the society at great risk. In addition to that, of course, there are other areas of the safety net that will now be at risk. And finally, in terms of the issue of what is before us, the whole notion that we must follow best practices in international financial regulation has now been turned on its head. For it is very, those very best practices that are now being identified as the major underlying cause of the financial side of this economic crisis. So the issue is no longer following best practices, but indeed following new practices that must now emerge out of the regulatory challenge before us. Those, therefore, have led one to look carefully at what we must, in fact, do. And one of the rather paradoxical situation that has emerged is that what we must do in the short term is really in opposition to what we must do in the long term. For in the short term, we must indeed find ways, ways in which to develop endogenous growth and perhaps lead to protectionist measures and already some of the social and political discontent of which Patrick spoke about could easily be traced to that strategy of moving towards protectionism. Even very recently, the US government had to alter its position on free trade somewhat in the relationship with the rest of the world. So protectionism is what we got to do today. Free trade is what we got to do tomorrow. Deficit financing, whether it is through stimulus packages or any other form, is what we need to do today. But debt sustainability is what we need to do tomorrow. The high cost of capital is what we have to overcome today. But maintaining the competitiveness of the economy is what we have to do tomorrow. Short-term payouts in the social safety net is what we have to do today. But long-term accumulation of capital for sustained safety nets, or however you call it, is what we have to do tomorrow. And the involvement of a political economy as distinct from the real economy or from the financial economy is what we may have to do today. Whereas for tomorrow, we must go back to the issue of market discipline as the main allocator and creator of wealth. So those stark distinctions about the policies that must be followed today are at opposition to the policies that must be followed tomorrow. This raises a critical issue. And that is why I said earlier that I believe that it was really a crisis in economic theory itself and in the practice that follows the prescriptions emerging out of economic theory. That is a rather big assertion. But nonetheless, it is somewhere in there that we must search for the answers to give us the sense of comfort that is absolutely necessary and more important, the sense of confidence that we know what we are doing. It is very clear today that most countries of the world will not say with great confidence that what they are doing is the right thing. We are modeling through a system, trying to create 
at times a sense of confidence by official statements, but in private conversations, recognizing that we really do not know where we are going and what will happen in the short term. Hence, there are those varying views as to whether or not this is indeed is a V-shaped recession or a U-shaped recession, or indeed, at, at worst, is it an L-shaped recession. No one is able to identify what is the nature of the recession before us. Depending on that determination, one can then prescribe a, a path forward. 